Hey boys and girls, let's talk about families of the periodic table. See, I drew a family there. Looks like, like a cat. It's a dog-ish cat hybrid. Mouse. Whatever, it's fine. It's a family because we're talking about families of particular importance here. So let's look at kind of a general outline of how the periodic table is organized into these families and you have all the names there for you. And we're going to talk about pretty much each and every one of those in a little bit more detail. Okay, so, so remember that the staircase divides the periodic table by metals and non-metals. Okay, so that's important. Okay, so remember our non-metals are over here and our metals are over here. Right. Except and for hydrogen. Hydrogen. That's a non-metal. So here we're just looking at the names. We start with alkali metals and alkaline earth metals. Mm -hmm. Then the big box in the middle is the transition elements. Mm -hmm. And then we go all the way over past the staircase. We have halogens and noble gases. So let's talk a little bit more about what properties each of those families has. Great. All right. So starting with alkali metals. So take okay. it away. I'll take some notes as we're going. So alkali metals is the first... Uh, group, the first family, you notice that hydrogen is not shaded in. So they are relatively soft. They're silvery in color. And these are very, very reactive. So if you threw sodium into some water, what do you think would happen? Uh, it would actually react, not really violently, but it would like bubble and, and, and actually cause a pretty decent reaction. So soft, silver, reactive. Reactive. And they're not found in nature um, in comp uh, uncombined. Right. Yeah, they don't. They so are only found in compounds. They are really reactive, so therefore they want to react and combine with something anyway. So, right. and by the way, like sodium, it, it just kind of looks like a gray stick of butter, and you can kind of cut it like butter. It's yeah. really interesting. Uh, so that's family one A or group one. That first column there. This excludes hydrogen. Remember, because hydrogen's a nonmetal. All right. So that's the alkali metals. Yeah, I think that's good for alkali okay. metals. And what's next? So the alkaline earth metals are also soft metals. Okay. Hey, they're still reactive, but not quite as reactive. Um, okay. What else do we know about so them? They're gray. They're soft. They're gray. They're, they're moderately reactive. Not quite as reactive, like you said, as the alkalis. Um, that's, I mean... That's pretty much it. That includes things like uh, what we have, um, uh, magnesium, calcium, yeah, uh, anything that's over in that spot right there. So be very careful. Alkali and alkaline earth sound very similar. So just make sure you understand what those are. Uh, let's, let's keep moving then. Okay, so next we have transition metals, uh, yes. which is the majority of the periodic table. Um, you notice yeah. that the two lines at the bottom are part of the transition elements. Yes. So these are hard metals. That's the main difference. Remember the first okay. two were soft metals. These are hard metals. There's things like copper in here and mm. uh, uh, iron, Silver, tungsten. gold. Yeah. yeah. So these are very, very hard and they, they have something, I, I want to mention this, they do have what we call multiple valence states, which we'll kind of get into a little bit later. Uh, but that's just... The only thing I can really tell you about them besides that they're hard metals. They don't really react with water either. Okay. Don't really react with water. Okay. Um, can we think of anything else? I think that's for good for transition. Transition metals. Okay, that big chunk in the middle. Next we've got, ooh, the halogens. Halogens are kind of fun. Yeah, they are. And this is the first group of non-metals that we're talking about. These are extremely reactive and they're non-metals. Yes, these are extremely reactive non-metals. All right. And what else do you know about halogens? Well, halogens, um, you know, for some reason, everybody thinks that everything to the right of the staircase, all those non-metals, they think they're gases, all of them. Don't think about it that way. I want you to know that anything can be a solid, a liquid, or a gas, depending on the right temperature. Iron can be a gas. So... Please don't just call them all gases. Um, but then so halogens. Halogens. Which ones are gases, solids, liquids? Okay, so uh, you have the ones up here, like uh, fluorine and chlorine, that are uh, gases at mm -hmm. room temperature. And then you have uh, bromine and iodine, which are a little bit lower, which are 
generally liquid, and then acetine, which is a, a solid at room temperature. Yeah, so it's kind of an interesting. It's an interesting thing about those. Uh, and now that we've talked about gases, well, let's talk about the noble gases. So the last one here. when I hear the word noble, I think of like kings and queens and um, people looking up to them. Right. So the noble gases are unreactive, generally. So yeah, we'll say generally non-reactive. So okay. what we'll find is that most elements are trying to be like the noble gases, and that's why we get compounds formed. Okay. So the noble gases do not associate with the people that are lower than them. They no. don't make compounds very often. No, they just go Rare along on exceptions. their merry way. Okay. Um, let's see. So I think that about covers it for yeah. all of our stuff. I think that's good.